Greetings, seekers of the uncharted from Paranormal M. Join us on an adventure into the inexplicable. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to be part of our latest enigmatic tales. Happy exploring. So this happened when my sister and I were in high school. We rented out this semi-detached house for a few years with our mom, dad, and eight-year-old brother at the time. It was a newish area, and it was a pretty family-friendly neighborhood. Our house always gave me weird vibes in general, but I had no idea why. It was kind of small and the layout was weird. When you walked into the kitchen area from the living room, you had the actual kitchen. The stove, the fridge, the table, all that to the left. Then to the right side of it was carpet and there was a little electric fireplace that didn't work. Our parents' wedding pictures were hanging on top. We never used that space, so my dad put a Bowflex machine there, which made it even more ugly. Moving on, we bought a dog that year. She would frequently bark in the corner of our room, mine and my sister's. When no one was in there, it was pitch black. When we would go upstairs to see, she would still be barking. It was like a scared territorial kind of bark. As she barked, she would back up at the same time in fear. It was spooky. But I never saw anything, so I was just kind of whatever about it. I also saw my brother come down the stairs in the morning only to have him be sleeping in his room. Now what I'm about to write is still unexplainable to this day. Our parents still don't believe us. We were all hanging out in the kitchen, my sister, brother, and I when suddenly we look on the wall in the weird carpet area and there was a ginormous spider crawling on it. It was probably tarantula sized. We lived in Canada, so this is not normal for us. We were both like, oh my God, let's take a picture of it because nobody's gonna believe us. So my sister whips out her phone and it won't turn on, never happened before. So I was like, whatever, I'm gonna go upstairs quick and get mine. So I jolt up the stairs and come back down quick. As I was coming down, I just see the rest of the spider's body as it disappeared behind my parents' wedding picture on the wall. The thing is, we inspected this picture and it was literally flat against the wall. There's no way anything, especially a spider that big, could fit behind it. We were so confused and still are to this day. We've had a few weird experiences afterwards, but nothing crazy after leaving that house. My sister and I shared a weird dream once, and that's kind of where it ended. Ghost Preacher and Attacking Shadow Entity Long Story I was raised in a family that never once dismissed the paranormal fact, we all kind of reveled in it. I mean, hell, I remember at eight years old, my freaking grandma bought me my first ever ghost book. It was called The Everything Ghost Book. So needless to say, I was pretty much always a weird kid. My family had always been superstitious and even quote-unquote sensitive to a point. My mom would always say things like, and this is in quotes, I have a feeling I'm gonna see quote-unquote person today, and she would always run into them somehow. My first real experiences start 10 years ago when I was just 16 years old. My mom had found a cheap foreclosed house in a ridiculously small town called Ponce de Leon in Missouri, or as I like to call it, Missouri. <laughs> Naturally, she fell in love with the house. My mom, my older sister, and I moved in not long after. I was homeschooled at this time, and I was not happy about moving to such a small rural area. And when I say small, I mean I could literally walk to the town post office, right around the corner as well as the town church. Not to mention you had to drive up a few hills to even get cell reception. Although I didn't share my mom's excitement about the move, the quaint town was kind of beautiful. It had a strange little cemetery and many natural springs and waterfalls, as the town name suggests. Upon doing recent research of the town, I found this little blurb on Wiki. 
and this was how the town got its name, and why people around the town joked about the water's healing powers. The community was founded circa 1875 as a health resort to exploit the mineral spring at the location. The resort was named for the explorer, Juan Ponce de Leon. The resort and town prospered, and with a population of around 1,000, it was the largest town in the county. We soon realized after moving in that the neighbors were pretty close-knit. Upon conversation with one of them, my mom had found out a few things about the house. It was built in the 1950s, and in the 1980s they started to add on to it and it was turned into a Baptist preacher's per parsonage, excuse me or a church house provided for a member of the clergy. This is the same preacher that spoke at the church right up the road. It was later sold to the prior buyers, then foreclosed, and that's when we got it. Nothing more was said of what happened to the preacher. Now, pretty much immediately after we moved in, we started to update the house. We did flooring, painting, and all the things that come with buying an older house. We hadn't experienced anything unusual during this time. After we had gotten settled in and all the renovations ceased, I invited my friend over to show her the new house. This is when my first experience happened. I started showing her around the kitchen, the living room, bathrooms. And that was because I was saving my bedroom for last. As soon as I started to push my bedroom door open, we heard an object scrape across the tile of my bedroom directly towards us. I looked all around, and that's when I saw a little LED book light by my feet. It's important to note that I strictly remember wedging that book light between two heavy books on my bookshelf the night before. And that bookshelf was at least 12 feet from my bedroom door. I remember my friend's just face looking tense and uneasy as I tried to explain. I even marched over to my bookshelf and tried to understand the logistics of how it could have just even happened. Truthfully, there was no way I could explain it, and frankly, the fact that it was thrown in my direction specifically made me feel super anxious. That event seemed to be the catalyst. Strange things started happening to not only me, but my family as well. When we started opening up about the whole ordeal as a family, all three of us started to realize that we all shared all these experiences. One we all heard, when walking down the same hallway, was a man's deep voice saying, Hey! in a rushed, loud tone. Anyone who's heard any kind of voice phenomenon knows that it's so strange because it sounds as though it's directly in your ear canal. It's unlike anything else. Another common occurrence that we shared was in the bathroom at night. When we had to wake up and pee, we all recounted hearing heavy footsteps. Almost like a man in boots. Footsteps. Approaching the closed bathroom door. The steps would stop right outside the bathroom door and you could bend down and see the shadow of feet underneath the door. Then they would walk away. We also frequently heard the front door opening only to find that it was fully closed. At one point, my mom, being sensitive as I mentioned earlier, was lying in her bed at night, just about to drift off when she got a strange feeling come over her. She got the image in her head of an older male. She mentioned that he had an angry face and you could just feel this feeling of anger and hostility. I think she came to the assumption that it could have possibly been the preacher, although we have no proof of this. If it was him, I can certainly tell you he did not like me one bit. This is where my story and experiences turn a little bit darker. We had lived in the house for about a year now or so, and the summer started to come around. I decided I wanted my own space and moved out to the separated garage space. It was a huge space that we never kept the cars in anyway. I remember completely making the space my own. I bought huge curtains, painted the cement walls, 
got a mini fridge, bought a TV, a PS2, and most importantly, all my music equipment. I've always been a music lover and devoted a lot of my time to playing electric guitar in my early teens. This is something that followed me. Right about this time is when I found my love for classic rock, but what really intrigued me was its dark history. It had gotten to a point where my mom and sister barely saw me in the house anymore. I had basically become a hermit in the garage, playing music and delving deep into research on my laptop. One figure in classic rock I was particularly engaged in was Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. According to a lot of books and articles, he was into the occult and followed English occultist Aleister Crowley. I often found myself falling down a rabbit hole and I started to feel so disconnected from reality. It was then when I became obsessed with that old idea, you know, the whole sell your soul to the devil and shred like a madman on guitar thing. And one time while practicing, I believe someone or something gave me a small taste of what it would feel like. There was one solo in particular I had tried to play a few times but could never quite hammer down. I had started to practice it again one day and started playing most all the fast-paced solo perfectly, almost without any effort on my part. I all but ripped my guitar strap trying to get my guitar off. It terrified me. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for me to stop my isolation or research. I didn't touch my guitar for a while, though. My friends that I had then were very like-minded, all very interested in the paranormal, the occult, and otherworldly things. My garage started to be a safe place for all my friends I had, and there were plenty of long nights partying and partaking in things no mom would be proud of. But we were rebellious and pretty defiant teenagers. None of us cared at all at that time. It was around this point I remember almost dreading going into the house when I had to inevitably take a shower or use the bathroom. In a sense, I didn't feel particularly welcome there either. I remember taking a shower one day, listening to Black Sabbath on a nearby iPad. The music kept pausing, so I would reach out and press play again. This happened about three more times when I finally yelled, I know it's you, stop doing that! it didn't happen again for the remainder of my shower. It could have been a coincidence, or a technical fault for sure, but I remember being so bold toward what I thought was that old preacher man, almost feeling a hatred towards him. One morning when I was still sleeping in the garage, my mom busted through the door and started to throw all my things around. She was screaming, I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but something's gotta change. Something's not right. Her voice sounded angry, but I could hear the undertones of fear. Keep in mind, it's not like I had a huge pentagram spray-painted on the exterior of the garage. As far as I knew, she had no clue of what I was looking into, and what I had even been experiencing. The intuition of a loving and concerned mother, I guess. So, she proceeded to rip down my posters, grabbed a random item of mine, and threw them outside the garage door into the lawn. I remember this like it was yesterday because I think it finally hit me how far things had gone. And seeing my mom so upset and ultimately scared, I think knocked some sense into me. It was then that I also moved back into the house as it was turning to fall and started to become too cold to stay in that garage overnight anyways. Ultimately, I purged everything I had that truly had any dark personal significance to me during my move back into the house. The last thing that happened, and probably the worst of all, happened to my sister. The only way I heard her story was by listening to her explaining it to my mom. Even though I was completely moved into the house now, my family still kept their distance. I knew they felt something too. I felt as if I really divided my family. My sister had a job that required her to get up early in the morning, and when it was still dark outside. She was smoking a cigarette on the back porch, which had a direct view of the garage and the steep hill that runs alongside the detached garage. She said she saw a dark mass low to the ground. 
She first spotted it come from behind the back of the garage, and then it started to charge down the steep hill towards the back porch where she was standing. She expressed to my mom that she had never felt so much fear in her life. She quickly shut the back door. She also said that she didn't believe it was an animal because it was charging towards her. There was absolutely no sound, no paws, hooves, or sound of feet on the soft ground. The house seemed to go quiet after that. No voices, no footsteps. Unfortunately, a few years later, my mom could no longer keep up during a harsh winter. Everything started to break and we didn't have the money to repair things. We couldn't even keep the house warm. We decided to up and leave. Most of our belongings were still in the house when we did leave. We came back a few times on warmer days to grab some more of our things and started to see our old home become in a complete state of disrepair. Mold growing absolutely everywhere. Paint starting to peel and all the hard work we had put into it gone. It was harder for my mom to see. It was her first house that she bought and it killed her to just abandon it. It eventually went back into foreclosure. When I turned 20, I got my first apartment, and it had to be blessed twice. I thought everything had gone back to normal at that point. I then met my now husband when I was still in my first apartment. He had no idea of my dark past and admitted to me that he felt something dark in my apartment. One night it had gotten so bad he said that he had to pray over me. I've had two apartments since then and we both don't sense anything inherently dark. Sometimes I still wonder if it's truly left. I got in contact with a good friend who distanced herself from me during that dark time. I would actually consider her my closest friend. She recounts things very differently and said that I had definitely changed. She has a few stories of her own and things that I have said to her that were very unlike my true character. The crazy thing is, I don't remember saying some of these things. I truly don't think I knew how bad it had gotten. The Hooded Figure about ten years ago, when I was in my early teens, I experienced my first, and so far, only paranormal experience. During the summer when this happened, I was visiting my father in Hungary with my two sisters. The night this happened was just like any other night. My grandmother was staying over, and between her, my father, and my sisters, all three bedrooms were taken, leaving me to sleep on the sofa in the living room. My sisters and I had just gotten back from a late night of hanging out with some friends, and we decided to get ready for bed, pretty immediately, since we were all very tired. As I got into my bed for the night, my sisters continued talking quietly in their room with the door open and the lights from their bedroom on. My father and grandmother were asleep. My father's house wasn't creepy by any means. But the one unnerving thing about sleeping in the living room in the dark was the fact that all three doors leading into it had a large panel of frosted, wrinkled glass on the top half. And this allowed you to see fuzzy shapes or figures of people on the other side of the door. This made what I saw all the more mysterious, and at the time, terrifying. Still wide awake, I looked up through the glass of one of the doors, and looking as clear as anything I'd ever seen was a hooded figure staring right at me. Gray and featureless, it was standing on the other side of the door and perfectly backlit by the light streaming out of my sister's room. I immediately froze, unable to take my eyes off of it. The figure was clearly watching me, although it didn't have any eyes or face that I could see. Any defining features were obscured by some type of hood or shawl it wore over its head and shoulders. As I lay there frozen in fear, my mind quickly eliminated all the possibilities of this thing being human. Both my grandmother and my father were asleep, and my sisters were still taking in their bedroom, or, excuse me, talking in their bedroom. Not to mention, why would any of my family just stand there? 
looking at me without moving in the dead of night. After some time, I finally plucked up the courage to call out to one of my sisters to come, unsure of what else to do. She told me she'd be there soon, leaving me staring at this figure for another terrifying period. Then, just seconds before she was about to step out of her room and through the very same door the figure was standing behind, it glided away and out of sight, and my sister walked through as if nothing had even happened. For me, this was the nail in the coffin, so to speak, that I witnessed some type of spirit, ghost, or guardian angel that night. The way in which it glided away on the other side of the glass was so unhuman-like in its movement. I know that what I saw that night was something paranormal. I have the cremation ashes of four people in my apartment. Could they be messing with me? About three years ago, my beautiful mom passed away. When she did, I got not only her ashes, but my dad's and my mom's dad's as well. Also, last year my mother-in-law plus son-in-law and two kids moved in with me and brought the ashes of my father-in-law. Now that we're all caught up on why I have so many dead people in the house, for the past year, every month or two, I've woken up to something grabbing my toes. At first, I would jump up and go to the end of the bed thinking that it was my daughter, because who else would it be, but no one would be there. After a few times of this happening, I decided that maybe it was my mom, just saying hello, because she used to wake me up by grabbing my toes that way. So I tried not to freak out when it happened, really. But maybe two months ago, I was in the kitchen, kind of pretty late at night, and I guess somebody left the cupboard open because it was open, and I kid you not, a cup came flying out of the cupboard and nearly hit me. It just flew out. It landed next to my foot. When I told my family what had happened, my son-in-law laughs almost evil-like and says that she think... S-I-L means son-in-law, no? Onward and upward, anyhow. She thinks that it was her dad messing with me because the cup was covered in pictures of butterflies. And any time they feel that they get a message from him, it had to do with butterflies. So, okay, my father-in-law doesn't like me. Then last night I was laying with my daughter, because even though she's ten years old, I still put her to bed at night. I dozed off for an hour or two. Then I just woke up for no apparent reason. Then the covers pulled up my leg crazy fast and something grabbed a hold of my foot. I was wide awake and not just felt, but saw the covers move. I jumped up so fast I don't even know how I got my arm out from underneath my daughter's head. The thing or ghost or whatever grabbed my foot wasn't cold like I would think a ghost might be, though. It was just like room temperature. What's going on here? This doesn't happen to any of the other six people in my house. People in caps. Just me, why? Is it my mom grabbing my toes and my foot? My father-in-law throwing a cup at me? Or could it be something else altogether? And, most importantly, should I be scared? One too many experiences. My family and I moved countries when I was young, and the first house we moved to in that country was about 40 years old, owned by a young guy. I can't tell you where, but it's one of the Commonwealth countries. The reason for not disclosing the location is because I want this to remain somewhat anonymous. But I know that people who I've told this story may know who I am. It was a rented property and nothing out of the ordinary other than multiple neighborhood cats roaming around the dying garden with very much dead lawn. When we moved in, we were fine for a few weeks, and then it started. I had a really good relationship with my family, until we moved into that house. Everyone started to pick fights with each other, and when we were living there, nothing ever was going right. 
Everyone was on edge, the vibe was off. I sometimes saw pearly dusts floating above me at night while laying down on bed. I reasoned it as cars passing by, producing that reflection on the walls or something. But it was still there, even after the cars passed by in the street. I didn't think much of it at the time, and as a kid I just thought we moved to a dusty old house. Then the house would randomly get cold, and when it did, it would never get warm, despite the three portable heaters in the same room. And scarily enough, they were all functioning fine. And where it would get cold in the house would vary every time. At the time, we just thought that the construction of the house was old, and maybe we had thin walls or the heaters were all defective. Then one day I saw it. Before I get into details, I want you to imagine this corridor right in the middle of the house, surrounded by bedrooms and bathrooms. Basically, this corridor had no natural light, and it was very, very dark if all the bedroom doors were closed. Going back to this encounter, I was in the bathroom washing my hands, and as I opened the bathroom door to exit, I see this fog. And this fog resembles a human arm, moving back and forth as if it was walking disappeared at the end of the corridor, a full arm stretching from shoulder to the tips of the fingers, moving as though attached to an invisible body, resembling a brisk walk in that dark corridor. It couldn't have been some light coming outside from the windows, because it was in the corridor that did not have any natural light available. Plus, it was daytime. Only after this encounter I felt the shiver down my back, a genuine shiver that you get when you see something that you can't logically process. I didn't share these encounters with my family back then, because I didn't want to scare anyone, and I was in doubt with the experience. When we found a new place and moved out of that house, I finally felt ready to share this experience with my family, jokingly saying that the house was haunted. I only got to know then that everyone had the same experience, Seeing something in the air, nightmares, a ghastly arm, cold spots. My mom would have nightmares of this black shadow trying to enter into the house while she would hold them back out. My sibling who also saw the arm told me that while the arm was moving away, exactly the same way I've described above, he swears that the temperature in that corridor must have dropped in that moment as he could see his own breath. I feel like this whole thing could be explained due to stress of moving to a new country. I don't know. I'm just thankful that we were only renting it out temporarily, and that we were able to leave. From Guardians to Unwanted Guests I grew up as a mixed-race, mixed-culture child my mother being a black female and my father a Native American. Traditionally, Natives are very in tune with the spiritual world. My mom, not so much. Mostly holding that good old Christian belief system, and often referring to my dad's spiritualism as his quote-unquote crazy Native beliefs. However, I've always connected to ghostly entities, and keep quiet for the most part not wanting my mother to refer to me the same way as him. I often called these entities my guardians when I was a child, because whenever I did something stupid or unsafe, they, or some of them, would protect me. So I literally grew up not fearing the supernatural. Now, so you can understand why I'm so comfortable as a child... I'll elaborate a little on my interactions. I was a latchkey kid, so after school I would walk home, lock myself into the house, and then went about my day, feeding myself, doing my homework, and watching TV. It wasn't uncommon for an elderly woman's spirit to often sit down on the couch with me until my nana, my grandmother, got home from work. 
It wasn't until my teen years that I realized that the elderly woman was my great-grandmother who had passed away six years before my birth. Throughout my lifetime, I've interacted with many spirits. Most stuck in a loop, a couple I could interact with, and the one that still terrifies me to this day. I had just finished my senior year of high school, and I had applied to a local community college. I was one of those students who balanced between poor enough to file for financial aid, but wealthy enough that I didn't get much. Not enough to pay for all my classes and books. So, I started house-sitting our family and friends' animals to pay the rest. My mother's previous boss was one of those people. She loved traveling and would often do, you know, this about two or three times a year for at least a month. She was retired at the time. She lived in a rural area, with one neighbor close enough to contact just in case of emergency. I had been to the house twice before when I was a child, and both times I was unsettled. My mother's boss, let's just call her Amy, was a teenager during World War II, and was placed in danger because of her parents' open objection to Hitler. So, they fled to America. She's a photographer in her spare time, and she adores Mexico, and at the time was looking to move there, and with that said, she had hundreds of masks hanging on her walls, all throughout her house accompanied with photos that she took of cemeteries and gravestones. For a couple of years, I experienced small things and voices, dragging noises. Periodically, things would have been moved. Nothing too terrifying, but when I started dating an old friend, I had him staying with me just to have an immediate backup, if something were to happen. When this happened, I was 21. My boyfriend had expressed some discomfort in being in the house, especially at night, to which I told him about the multiple spirits I had encountered there. I mentioned that none of them have been hostile, and as long as we left them alone, they would leave us alone, with the exception of the screaming man. He liked to stand outside of the window and scream around three in the morning, and I simply would ask him to quiet down. We were playing games on the second week of our stay. When my significant other had to use the bathroom, I opted to char or change into my jammies while he went off into the darkness. When he screamed very loudly. Now my significant other isn't easily scared, but he hightailed it back into the living room. He said that the dark entity that often stood beside the homeowner's bedroom door, which happened to also be next to the hall that led into the house from the cars, had turned and looked at him. It paused before getting bigger and started running towards him. Very strange behavior for the being. But I assumed that we had upset it, so I apologized for bothering it. From then on, my significant another and I went to the bathroom together during the night. Fast forwarding to last week, things had gotten a bit tenser. Each entity started getting more and more agitated, until it seemed like our nights were filled with activity, and our space seemed to shrink until it was the single bedroom. I kept my keys on the coffee table in the living room my computer for school in the family room, and a few toiletries. Those objects would appear back in my bedroom, as if someone carelessly tossed them in. Spirits I had no problems with started running away or charging at me. Eventually I took my significant other home to see if things slowed down. They didn't. By the time my two-month house-sitting job was done, I was exhausted and cranky. I left the house at ten at night, being that the family would be back around four in the morning, and during the long drive on the dirt road, a childlike figure slowly walked across. I paused, seeing the same dark shadow that guarded the entrance to the home, and watched as it ran across the road, taking the child figure away with it. 
After a second, I continued on my way home, not wanting to slow to a, slop, to a stop or leave the vehicle to investigate. Four days afterwards, I was chilling at my house, finishing up my finals. My grandmother, who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and a dog were in the bedroom behind me. My grandfather was at his aunt's funeral in Bermuda, and my mom was in California for business. I say this because I need you to understand, I was essentially alone and the only one awake. The sounds of someone dropping and dragging a large box echoed from down the hall. My grandparents have an and sweet bedroom. They had their own living room space, where I was doing my homework, a bathroom, a closet, and a bedroom that hid behind a door. One that was closed. I paused in my essay, suddenly feeling the familiar unease that I associated with Amy's house. The dragging sounds never left. What I assumed was my kitchen, and I by no means went to investigate. But I had never had a spirit follow me home, and that night I didn't sleep because that spirit didn't wish me well. When I did come out in the morning, I found my house-sitting bag torn open with all my house-sitting gear tossed about. It's safe to say I never house-sat for Amy again, and I hadn't experienced anything outside of the norm of what goes on at my house since. But there have been points that I can feel the hairs on my arms raise like I'm being watched when I'm at other houses. I played with my dead grandfather in my dreams as a child. So I never knew my grandfather. He passed away two months before I was born. He died in November of 96, and I was born in January of 97. And I'm the only grandchild that he didn't get to meet in person. So growing up, I always knew who he was, and I always assumed it's because I was told who he was when I was little until I was 15. So I'm at a hospital visiting someone who just had a baby, and somehow the topic of dead relatives visiting people in dreams comes up. My mother proceeds to tell a story of when my grandfather visited me when I was little. I got so emotional at 15 I had to leave the room and the hospital entirely to collect myself after the story was told. The story goes like this, as my mother told it. I was playing in the living room one day while my grandma was looking at photo albums. I was maybe three at the time, and I walked over to my grandma as she's looking at a picture of her late husband, and I say, That's the man that plays with me in my dreams. My grandmother responds, What? I continue to repeat what I said before, but I add, before he leaves, he kisses me right here and tells me to be good. I gesture to the middle of my forehead in between my eyebrows. This is where my grandfather kissed all of his grandkids before telling them bye. Something I would have never known unless I was told or experienced it myself. My grandmother freaks out and calls my mom at work and asks her if she'd ever mentioned Herman, my grandpa, to me. My mother responds no and says, the only thing I've told him is that daddy is his guardian angel and he'll always look after him. And I told him that the day that he was born. My grandma proceeds to tell my mom to come home. So she does. Once my mom arrives home, my grandma pulls up to her side and asks her a bunch of questions. Then brings her into the living room where I'm just doing three-year-old things. She then pulls me over and says, Tell mommy what you told me about this man as she points to the picture of my grandpa, and I respond. That's the old man that plays with me in my dreams. Before he leaves, he kissed me right here. I gesture to the middle of my forehead between my eyebrows once more. My mother and grandmother are now both freaking out as I continue to play with my toys. That's where the story ends. As far as I've been told, my mom never mentioned to me who my grandfather was other than that what she told me when I was born. I've always known who he was and that he had this weird connection with me. I guess since he never got to meet me, he made up for it in this way. 
He's the reason for my obsession with music. He was a traveling bluegrass musician in Kentucky. I was raised hearing stories of him singing and playing guitar. I've idolized him my entire life, so that story was very emotional for me to hear. A haunting at a fire department, or faulty pipes. This all happened when I was a kid. I'm 23 now and it still gives me chills. Okay, so I'll jump right into it. Both of my parents were volunteer firefighters and I practically grew up in a fire station around all sorts of first responders. This fire station was connected to one of the county police department offices, which was a small four-room office upstairs with two entrances, a door that led outside, and another that led downstairs to the bay where the fire trucks were. Everything seemed normal and fine, until a friend of my cousin and my cousin's husband, an EMT, used a Ouija board to try to talk to an officer that had just died a week before. So let me give you a rundown on this cop real quick before I get into the paranormal stuff that started happening after his death and the Ouija board use. So from what I remember of him, which isn't a lot, he was a pretty crooked cop. He would arrest people in the small town for drug possession. Then he would give the drugs to his son after they'd been processed into the system and counted so his son could sell them and they'd split the profit nasty. This goes on for years and there's rumors but no proof of who was stealing the drugs until he died. This officer had a surgery and was taken stolen pain meds and accidentally OD'd. They found his body and a large amount of stolen drugs in his home. So now on to the paranormal. So my cousin told me about them using the Ouija board there. This officer's death was recent, so them doing this to talk to him, well, to me, a kid who loved horror movies, was super cool and fascinating. The one key detail I do remember from the story that my cousin told me was that they asked the spirit who was there, and the spirit whispered to the officer and told him his name into his ear. For a while, I thought my cousin was messing with me to scare me, until a few months later I had an experience there. So I was about 10 when this happened, maybe 12 the oldest. I used to go work out with my parents at the fire station because I was a chunky kid and the family doctor rode my parents' ass to get me to lose weight. Well, one night we had finished working out my parents get a tone to the firehouse and my mom agreed to stay there with me until my dad got back. So we're sitting there watching old training VHS tapes on the TV in the dark and we hear loud stomping upstairs. My mom and I immediately froze and looked at each other because we thought it was just us there and we're pretty sure it is just us. It was bizarre. The stomping would start in one room, then stomp to the other. Filing cabinets would open and slam, doors would open and slam almost as if it was looking for something. Then the stomping got to the middle of the room and stopped. It was so quiet you could hear a needle drop. The way this fire station was set up, there was a ramp that went down to the bay where the trucks were. So my mom and I are sitting there in silence, just listening. And we hear the door to the bay open and someone walking up the ramp. My mom got up, went to open that door that looked out into the hallway at the ramp and nothing was there, not a soul. But as clear as day, we heard a person walking up that ramp. Moments after that, every sink in the downstairs bathroom turned on, all eight of them. And I know someone will say that it could be faulty pipes, but do faulty pipes turn all the knobs on on the sink? I don't think so. This all took place in the span of 10 or 15 minutes, too. We turned off the sinks, and shortly after, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, my dad and all the other firefighters piled into the fire station. My mom and I told my dad and everyone else what was happening, but what do you know, they didn't believe us. They told us we were making it up and we were hearing things. Ever since the Ouija board was used there, 
The feeling of that place is just weird and creepy. Where before it seemed very familiar and welcoming, like a place of safety. My experience with premonitions. I'm 27 and I've been experiencing significant experiences and premonitions since about five years old. Although my earliest vivid memory of a weird experience is when I was eight. When I was five or six, I just feel like I had really weird dreams. Something happened around that age range for me, but I don't know what. Age eight. Simply, I had a dream where a regular day happened, and then that day repeats itself. I always had a hard time getting up in the morning, so my mom yelled from a different room that I need to get up. I wasn't getting up. Then my grandmother helped me up so my mom wouldn't get too upset with me. I finally sit up, slowly waking up and still dazed. So, we lived in a two-bedroom apartment. It was me, my mom, and my grandma. My bed was in my grandmother's room, since it could fit two beds, while my mom had her own, yet smaller room. I have to walk past my mom's room to get to the living room, and while walking past, my grandmother says something to me. I can't remember what exactly, and so did my mom. Fast forward to school now. I can't remember specifics about the day, but the key part is that our class was especially loud and talkative which annoyed our teacher. So we were threatened with recess being lost if we kept being loud. She walked out of the class to handle something in school, and so we had at it. We started off at a good volume, but over time, it got kind of ridiculous and the teacher came back saying that she would hear us from the hallway. Door was closed. And we lost recess. Day ends, back home and sleep. And then I wake up and the same exact thing started happening. Once my mom yelled at me again the same way in the morning and my grandmother helping me up. I started to notice the patterns. Except the moment I had a clear memory of the whole day. So when I walked past my mom's room, I said what my grandmother was going to say. And she looked at me like, how did you know? I shrugged my shoulders in confusion. I wanted to tell her and now wish I did, but I wanted to see if the day was going to end up like my dream. Despite that small moment, everything proceeded as I saw in the dream. So, cue my mom appearing and I complete her words too. She was also surprised, but again I just make it seem like I'm being weird and ignore their questions. Now at school, and I'm for sure living the same day again. I spend most of the class finishing everyone's sentences at times, but no one took any real notice. When the teacher left the room again, I told the class to shut the fuck up or else we'll lose recess. I don't know, a lone eight-year-old kid convinced a class of 23 plus kids to shut up. Better than most teachers, but it happened. I did it just in time because around five minutes later the teacher walked in and praised us for being quiet because she could hear us down the hall at first but then got quiet as if she knew or as if we knew that she was coming. From there the day was completely different because we had recess. Ever since then I'm always having a fear that I would wake up at that same age again making this all a dream. Thanks, 2020. Age 10. This was my first time having premonitions while awake. I can't remember when exactly, but I know it was spring or summer solstice because I was still in school as this happened during aftercare. I attended a private school that had aftercare where we could play outside or stay in the auditorium or cafeteria room until our parents picked us up. Anyway, it was hot that day and all of us kids are just kicking it. My friends and I are all in the swing that are just facing the back, or sorry, that faces the blacktop, where we all usually play board games like dodgeball and all that. There were some kids playing soccer and all of a sudden I had a vision exactly like that so raven, 
where I stared blankly and I see what was going to happen with a bright yellow glow and a vignette. And then it went away and I come back to reality. My friends noticed what happened and was asking me what I was looking at. I point to a kid running with the ball and say, he's going to fall in three, two, one, and then he fell and flipped over. My friends lose their shit and ask me how I just did that. Of course, it just happened and I'm just as confused. I had a total of five visions that day, but only remember three. The other one was seeing my friends sitting on the playground, trucks getting chased by bees. Specifically, I see my friends on the trucks and one of them yells, Nothing's happening! And then they get attacked by bees from a bush. Once again, for this vision, it's happening randomly, but this time I didn't know when it would happen. My friends were all into my vision, so I told her what I saw. So they ran up to the trucks and sat and climbed on them. A couple of minutes go by, and then one of the girls says, Nothing's happening! And then they get bombarded by bees. At that point, we're all convinced that I can see into the future. Last vision was seeing the earth blow up. If it helps, all my vision I had were from my perspective of where I see it, not any other angle. So if it is true, I guess I'll be in a space watching the planet explode. Then again, three of the five visions came true, if I'm correct. I definitely know because I can recall feeling disappointed that not all my visions were accurate. Age 14, which is now. Since around 14, I would have random premonitions strictly in my dreams, and it would be for mundane things like a lunchbox falling on my face when I open a cabinet, or having a specific conversation when walking into a theater. I've become able to discern my deja vus when I experience them because I would intentionally try and remember when it came from a dream or a sequence, and it was actually repeating itself perfectly. And other times, I just sometimes know when something's going to happen, and thus I predicted a lot of personal events or read people perfectly, even though I don't know them. I may have seen a spirit too. Oh, and some kind of winged demon like flying in the sky, but overall premonitions have been the most consistent phenomenon I've experienced throughout my life thus far. My late dad was an exorcist. Discussion. Technically, Exorcisms are rituals done by ordained priests, but they did exorcisms with priests, deliverance rituals if without a priest, visited haunted places for research, etc. We had a storage collection of occult items, cases being documented and reviewed by their ministry. They guested in schools, institutions, prisons, talking about the importance of spiritual warfare. My dad also had a meeting with the late Pope John Paul II in Rome back in the early 2000s, and appeared in local media from time to time. They also did pilgrimage, local and international, alongside talks focusing on spiritual warfare. I have tons of photos to support this. He was like the Warrens and John Constantine combined. So I'll be focusing on my perspective growing up in a very religious family. A life filled with preternatural and supernatural events. Which also might have led to my father's demise, as per the team of chief exorcist of our archdiocese who handled my dad's case in the end. I'll be going back to some history first, as documented by his ministry and the accounts of my uncles and auntie. He grew up with some abilities, as simple as turning the TV on and off using his mind, to being an experienced practitioner of astral projection. With astral projection, he was even able to help the military to locate a plane crash by giving exact coordinates in a rural mountain region here, and identified the bodies by directly speaking with the victims. No survivors, since he worked for that airline too. 
with those abilities a group of cultists, in air quotes, was able to locate and identify my dad, through astral projection as well, insane. They went to our house and tried to recruit him. He was open arms with them until he felt so much negative energy emanating from these people. He drove them away and he felt he was starting to get possessed and tried to run over our maid with the car. Now, coincidentally, his priest friend came by and he was supposed to be a priest but left the seminary when my grandpa died to take care of my grandma just to visit him and witnessed my dad's possession and exorcised him. This is when his spiritual path started. After his friend priest left, he had a vision of the roof opening up to the sky and saw St. Michael the Archangel, an intense light. He drew his sword and reached out to him. My mom and our maid witnessed this, and all were dumbfounded. This happened in the early 1990s. He went soul-searching for 40 days and nights. A holy mountain is where he went, Mount Banahaw, where he met different personalities. Fast forward, all possession cases that our parish, the National Shrine, receives were being led straight to our house. Not just that. Local and international cases happened as well that my dad handled in the years that came. Growing up, we were taught to pray exorcism prayers and the rosary, all in Latin since we're susceptible to attacks given my dad's exposure. It was a common occurrence to wake up in the middle of the night to pee and hear someone screaming at our garage where the cases were being handled and would just tell myself, here we go again. Our house also became a gateway for spirits, given the exposure of my dad to these entities. A lot really latched to him, good and bad, and also shared a good number of personal paranormal experiences with them. My dad passed away back in 2007 due to kidney cancer. He only had four months to live after being diagnosed, from being normal to his passing. Many ruled out that it was spiritual warfare, because when my dad was already bedridden, paranormal shit came by storm and was the worst. Five demonic entities were in the house, handled by the team of the chief exorcist of Manila. It was crazy. When my dad was also in the ICU, he practiced deliverance on a fellow comatose patient due to an entity harassing this patient in the hospital. I have so many stories to tell. Specific cases and personal experiences being the son of this man. Though when he passed, everything died down. Paranormal and prenatural experiences happened from time to time, but not as often as when it did when my dad was still alive. I'm now an agnostic for personal reasons, but demons are real. Late one night, a little girl appeared behind me, and my friend it was terrifying. I think she might have turned into a dog, too. This occurred when I was 11 or 12. I'm 28 now. I was staying the night at my friend Danny's house, who lived just a few houses down from mine. There was a large pond behind her neighborhood, and we spent a lot of time there growing up. We'd go fishing, ride bikes, explore the small forest, but we really enjoyed catching turtles and tree frogs. Might sound weird, but what can I say? We had somewhat of an obsession with reptiles and amphibians. Another thing I should note is that there was an old Native American trail that went through all the backyards on our street. I wasn't the Trail of Tears, but it was related to it in some way, I don't really remember. Back to the story. I was up late playing video games with Danny, and after a while he wanted to do something else. It was close to midnight, but we decided to go out and try catching some tree frogs. A family that lived in a nearby house had gone on vacation, and they had a perfect backyard for catching frogs. We hopped their fence and started exploring. 
almost immediately I started getting a weird feeling. I had the feeling that we were being watched or something was nearby, and there was this odd energy in the air. I don't know how to explain it, but something just felt off. I remember feeling afraid, but I had no reason to be. We had done this kind of thing many times before, and it's never inspired fear. About ten minutes in, we thought we heard the frog saying, Help me! in a croaky, froggy voice over and over again. The weird thing is, we couldn't see any tree frogs with our flashlights, and the yard wasn't that big. They started chanting in unison, and that made it much louder, feeling more than a little creeped out. We bolted out of there and went back to the street. Now, we were standing under a streetlight on the street corner across from where the frog house was. I looked up at the light and noticed at least 15 dragonflies attached to each other like a human centipede. They were doing a spiraling motion as they flew closer and closer to the light. It was weird. So we heard and saw two unusual things. But you could possibly explain them away. What happened next, however, made absolutely zero fucking sense. After the dragonflies did their thing and flew away, Danny and I remained standing under that street light. We began talking about the strangeness of the frogs in particular. We both heard them croaking the same phrase, and we were pretty much just saying, what the fuck was that about? At some point during the conversation, I was instantly overcome with the most intense adrenaline rush I've had in my entire life. The feeling of fear without a source while at the frog house was back, but much, much stronger. It was like my fight-or-flight response was signaled for no reason. Once again, everything felt off, and it felt like there was an intense energy all around us making the air heavy. I was terrified, and I found out later that my buddy was feeling the same thing. I became as still as possible, listening intently to my surroundings. I didn't hear anything unusual, but I suddenly began to feel drawn to look at the street behind me. I knew something was there. Whatever was behind me was the source of my fear, and it was putting out overwhelming energy with its presence alone. I hesitantly turned around and looked. I have full body goosebumps just recalling this. In the middle of the street, about 20 yards away from us, there was an ordinary looking five to seven year old girl with long dark black hair, wearing a white nightgown. She was sitting Indian style on the street pavement with a doll in her lap, and she was combing the doll's hair with a hairbrush. I was pretty much terrified beyond imagination. I was frozen with fear. I could barely think straight. There was an incredible amount of energy in the air and I knew something wasn't natural. She looked innocent enough, but I felt like she could snap me in half with the snap of her fingers if she wanted to. Another creepy detail was that she never even looked at us. She kept her head down and focused on her doll, but she definitely knew that we were there watching her. After what felt like an hour, which realistically was probably 15 or 30 seconds, a car turned onto the street and began heading down the hill towards the girl. I remember the headlights getting brighter and brighter as it approached her. You would think maybe I would try to save her real quick, but I legitimately couldn't move. Also, I didn't really expect her to get hit for some reason. I never felt like she was in any sort of danger. Eventually, she became lost in the car's headlights, never looking up from her doll this whole time, by the way. The car just passed right through without any sound of a collision. It stopped at the stop sign 15 feet from us and made a right turn. We took our eyes off of where the girl was as we watched the car turn. When we looked back to where the girl had been, she was gone. Instead, there was a dog on the sidewalk precisely parallel to where the girl was sitting in the street. The dog was looking right at me when I noticed it, almost like it was waiting for me to see it. Then it just turned around and trotted up the hill in the other direction. 
after a few seconds, the shock wore off and we sprinted back to Danny's house and spent half the night looking out a second story window toward the street. I don't know what I saw, but Danny saw the exact same thing. I've always felt like there was a reason it happened for some reason, or a reason it showed itself, whatever it was, to us and all people. Last thing. The house in front of where the girl was seen was haunted. I lived on that street for ten years, and four to five different families lived in that haunted house during those ten years. All of them said it was haunted. I have a couple of stories about that too, but this is already way longer than I wanted it to be. Long update. Talk to friend. Stuff in the woods. Something completely took over the sky during my graduation party, and either everyone is denying it, or no one remembers. I finally got in touch with one of my friends and asked her to remember my graduation party as hard as she could. Before I talked about the event, she remembered it down to the overcast weather, but didn't remember the actual sound itself until I mentioned it. I tried to transcribe her exact words as best as I could while she told me. Yeah, wait, I vaguely remember something like that. I remember a really loud noise like a plane landing, and everyone just being like, what the fuck was that? Holy shit. Kind of looking at each other, then afterwards brushing it off as a plane since no one knew what it was. But we all looked, and I don't remember seeing anything outside. It shook the entire house down to the nails on the floorboards, though. Everything was rattling like crazy. That same year, 2012, in mid-July, I heard loud bangs coming from the sky late at night. I know it wasn't thunder because it wasn't raining and it wasn't even humid out and hadn't been all day. It definitely didn't sound like thunder either. You know the sound of a dumpster getting slammed back down after it's lifted by a fork truck? It was like that loud, but sounding like it was coming from a small area, directly in front of my neighbor's house. I saw flashes of light right afterwards. It was loud enough that I asked my mom if she had called the neighbors, but she hadn't heard a thing from inside the house. So yeah, that's what my friend said. In my other post, I read that someone else from Eugene, Oregon, the opposite coast as me, I'm in the Northeast U.S., experienced similar events later that year in December 2012. A lot of people were suggesting covert government military activity. LRAD and Gabriel's trumpet were amongst a few mentions. Many also reported a general unsettling insidious feeling throughout the beyond of 2012, my thoughts on that are as follows. Could this be government or military activity? I live near a small military base that's used as a weather station and for the local CAP program, pretty much the Air Force ROTC for those unfamiliar. Nothing other than small two to four passenger Cessna planes or the occasional helicopter ever takes off from there. It simply isn't large enough, and I've personally jogged the entire perimeter, was in CAP in high school. During my entire 15 plus years living in that house, there wasn't a single aircraft loud enough to hear from the base. One thing that might be unrelated, but it's definitely worth mentioning, is that I also live near a long abandoned Air Force data center. It's in a restricted area deep in the middle of the forest preserve. The buildings have been entirely gutted, but remain standing. Too hazardous to the environment to be torn down. There's also a ton of large World War II era storage bunkers along the trail, all locked up tight. I used to hike up there a lot with friends to spray paint and do drugs or other hood rat shit until we started hearing loud bangs at all hours throughout the woods and it would reverberate across all the trees. One of the final straws for me was one afternoon when my friend and I were up there alone, and a small yellow helicopter-looking drone hovered over us, 
about 150, 200 feet in the air. It stayed locked on us even after we noticed it and ran inside one of the buildings to get away. After that, I noticed it started becoming more heavily guarded by intimidating-looking park rangers, literally down to the cartoonishly large white vans and tinted sunglasses. But I got the sensation that it was being guarded by something else, long before the drone and rangers and any of that. I always felt like I was being watched up there. Something completely took over the sky during my graduation party, and either everyone is denying it or no one remembers. It was a sunny evening in 2012, probably late June. I had just graduated high school after a turbulent four years, and my parents let me throw a little get-together in the backyard with friends and family to celebrate. In total, including myself and immediate family, probably 15 to 20 people tops. My dad had just finished grilling all the food and everybody had moved inside to a small screened-in porch area to eat. Just in case it started getting buggy. Clear Shay. Here's where it gets weird part. Everyone was just sitting around eating and talking and in good spirits. Suddenly the sky gets very, very overcast. I live in an area where sudden storms aren't really a thing, and it didn't feel humid so it didn't seem like a rainstorm of any kind. It was as though someone switched the sky to a flat gray when it had been cloudless and sunny moments before. As soon as I noticed how gray the sky had suddenly become, a horrendously loud noise rang out across the sky. It sounded like a passenger jet engine was landing in our backyard. A hush fell across the entire group, and everyone looked nervously at each other. No one said a word, even my dad, a six-foot-something Norwegian raised by the Air Force vets, looked seriously, genuinely rattled, a look I'd never seen on him before, and never have since. The even stranger part, it passed as quickly as it came, and no one spoke about it once the clouds lifted. It was as though time had frozen during that moment, and then everybody went back to normal, sort of. The rest of the night just felt strangely off. Everyone acted kind of robotic, like actors in the play or NBC characters. The air felt tense. No one I've spoken to remembers it. Not my parents, my friends, my family members that were there. Even my sister, who remembers what she was wearing the first day of kindergarten didn't even remember. Even weirder is that I forgot about it until just now. I only remembered now that my parents are selling the house. I'm sitting alone in an empty house in that exact spot, and the memory just came flooding right back. I remember rushing to the window with my friends to try to get a look, but I straight up don't even remember if I saw anything or not, which freaks me out that my own memory is so spotty.